Hello everybody. It's been a while since I did a video. In fact, I've done a small one earlier this morning showing the uh, power of this new device. But I'm going to, uh, right now, give you a show and tell on the features of the device. So this is a new style PEMF. It is extremely powerful compared to the old style PEMF. This unit here you might remember. Um, really a, a lot more. 10 times, maybe 20 times, maybe 100 times more powerful. I just don't know. I don't have a meter strong enough um, or capable to actually detect how many gauze this is actually uh, producing. But it's certainly in the hundreds, if not thousands. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to say until I can actually measure it accurately. But I will do a comparison test and I will give you a relative reading. And I think the video that you see on the comparison test between these two and the meter and so forth, uh, strength at 20 feet will be very impressive. So it's already plugged in um, to the power source. Uh, pretty obvious. Got an on and off switch right here. And, and there we go. And I'm going to turn it on. So a little LED comes on. And plus you can probably hear the fan now. And it's ready to be connected to a coil. I have to, I have a new coil. I'm doing videos on those also. Um, I have two coils right here on the table. And I haven't plugged it in. And the reason why I haven't plugged it in here is because I don't accidentally want to fire the co coil up with my computer right here. Because the PMF field is so strong, um, I don't want to damage or overload the computer. Um, it's almost like an EMF, electromagnetic uh, field uh, coming in, and uh, or EMP, excuse me, electromagnetic pulse coming in from a nuclear warhead. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take this coil that I'm going to use for the demo, and I'm going to put it over here on a table outside the field of view of the camera. You will see another demo done with a... Uh, handheld camera that I'll, I can move around um, doing some comparison. I want to plug this in so I can demonstrate the features. Um, and so now the coil is plugged in and it will actually uh, um, show you through one LED what's going on here. I'm tilting this towards you. Okay, it looks like we've got a good aim here. Um, I have two six position rotary switches. One is the time that the unit will run for. It's a timer. It's a, you can set it for one of six positions. The uh, website has a uh, description of what those times are. I have a chart here temporarily taped on the top. I'm going to try to find a nice stencil I can put on here that'll uh, um, stencil the times onto this plastic case. The other um, control is for speed. So I'll explain this. Um, the times I can set are 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, and 30 minutes. So that's 1 minute, 2 minute, 5 minute, 10 minute, 20 minutes, and 30 minutes. The speeds that I can run this at are 1 half hertz, 1 hertz, 2 hertz per second, 4 cycles per second, 4 hertz, 7.5 hertz, and 12 uh, hertz. I can't not go any faster than 12 hertz with the technique that I use to uh, uh, design and make this box. Uh, there is something significantly different about 7.5 hertz and 12 hertz, and I'll explain that in a few seconds. So right now, I'm going to turn my knobs all the way counterclockwise. I'm going to tighten that. Uh, all the way counterclockwise, and what I've done is, is I'll run this for one minute and at a frequency of a half hertz. So if I press, I have a start button in here, um, this little black button right here that's been glued in. And the reason why it's been glued in is because I didn't have a proper screw type uh, button and I didn't want to uh, hold up building this prototype. So I glued a push button that I had hanging around in my little uh, parts box. The new units will have a very professional, uh, nice looking unit. I, I just hit it. You might have heard the click. And you'll also now see that it's flashing at uh, one half hertz a second. If this is an on and off button. Press it. Press it once. It starts. Press it twice. It um, stops. On and off. It's a toggle. I'm going to change the speed 
to 1 hertz a second to 2 hertz a second. So I went to position 3 on the switch, 3 hertz a second, and it'll flash. Um, uh, not, I went to position 3, 2 hertz a second. It'll flash right now at 2 hertz a second. Now I can turn this while it's flashing, and the speed won't change. But when this stops and starts, the next time it will start up at 4 hertz. So I'm going to stop it. I just press that button. And because now I have it in position 4, that is going to be 4 hertz per second. And you'll see the difference in the flash rate. So now it's flashing at 4 hertz per second. I'm going to stop it. Okay. Now when it gets running a little faster, Pressing the stop button isn't quite as responsive as when it's running slower. Uh, I had to punch that a little more than once. Uh, I had to punch it a couple of times to get it to stop. It's because when it's in the cycle of executing a pulse, it can't be monitoring the button. Um, I have an interrupt routine in here that I'm going to um, try to tr trim up or uh, fine tune to get it to be a little bit more responsive than it is and there will be something come very apparent in a few minutes. I'm going to switch to position 5 and this now will run at 7.5 hertz per second. I tried to make it Shulman's residence but I just couldn't get there with the internal uh, timing things had to take place and so forth and the closest I could get to Shulman's residence was 7.5 um, but that could be almost irrelevant today because Schumann's resonance is much, much faster than the 7.83. Um, you might look it up on the internet and you'll find that um, we're in a rather dynamic uh, time. Uh, our position in the galaxy and in the solar, in the galaxy, has us going through a very high energy cosmic uh, cloud. And Schumann's resonance has changed. But our bodies were tuned to that, and so you, when you click closer when you get a beat close to that showman's residence it's not bodies love it they really love it so at any rate um, a lot of talking I'm going to press a button and you'll see now it'll pet flash real fast so it's flashing now I have the coil next to me and I can hear that thing um, thumping it's pretty cool <laughs> sounds like a, 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 a very quiet drum player okay we got that to stop now the last speed is 12, and a, uh, 12 hertz per second and this runs a little differently because it runs so fast it won't acknowledge the button so what happened is I decided to run it at full speed 12 cycles per second for five seconds and then pause for one second and then run for five seconds it's only during that one second pause that um, you can press the stop button to stop <laughs> so I just went to the maximum speed and it'll just rip roar. Okay, so now it's running at 12, and it's going to run for five seconds. And I didn't press anything. I'm just showing you, and it's going to run for five seconds. I'm not doing anything. Next five second gap, I'm going to try to stop it. <laughs> okay, so I press the button during that next five second uh, uh, gap. The gap is only for one second, and it stopped. And that's how you have to stop the 12 hertz. Now, you can always just turn the power off. You want to stop it, you can always turn the power off and turn it back on. It'll go through a reset uh, sequence. In fact, I'll do that for you as part of this demo. Okay, I want to stop it. I just turned the power off. When I turn the power back on, it, the fan will come back on. It's doing some internal resets inside, and it's ready to fire again. Okay, next five seconds, I'm going to stop it, pulse. Okay, so I just stopped it during that next little pause gap. I'd like to point out a couple of other things about the unit. The cap here had to be a very uh, large, high-powered cap. Um, and white caps are rated. They're rated in voltage rating and in um, 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 micro... Uh, Farads and farads. This is a uh, 1500, 1500 farad cap, twice the size of the cap that we put into the old units here. Uh, in fact, even bigger than twice the size. And it also 
it also is a very large cap because it has very high voltage rating. There is a back EMF on the, the coil here that's being fired, and that, that back EMF can easily get up to two to three, maybe even 350 volts. This cap is rated at 400 volts or 450. Um, it is certainly not going to um, uh, die because of uh, back EMF pulses. And it's so big that it wouldn't fit inside the box, and I didn't want to put everything in a bigger box. I did this technique with the frequency converter, sticking a cap on the outside of the box because the box is so uh, the cap is so big. So that is an extremely quick presentation on the uh, new high-powered PEMF. You have to watch the video on the comparison between the old and the new, and that'll give you a sense of just how high power this is. Um, and it's amazing. Now, I didn't say something that I, I'm really uh, excited about. I've switched to um, the Arduino's uh, MPUs, MPU standing for a microprocessor unit, for uh, pretty much controlling all my newer devices. And the advantage to that is that there is a port here. I'm pointing to it right now. Hopefully, you can see it. And that port is a USB port. That's a miniature USB port that can interface to a computer. I have one right here I'm pointing at. Yeah, you can see it. And that, that, that was a little baby that I used to do a lot of development of the software and so forth on. And you can reprogram the Arduino. Uh, the program that's in here is provided uh, with this unit. This unit comes in um, uh, two other forms. It comes in a it's not really the whole unit. Um, I'll, I provide the uh, make available the PC printed circuit board that I had to have professionally printed. I've got several of them. And I'll sell this for people who want to do it themselves. I'll sell this in two ways. I'll sell it populated or unpopulated. And you can turn around and look on the uh, website to see uh, exactly uh, the differences in price. And I will also sell this as a kit, which will contain all the parts this will be populated with pigtails. Um, what pigtails mean, I'll have the wires dangling off that need to be connected to various parts inside. And the reason why I do it that way is so I can test the boards as a standalone. I need to be able to connect up things and say, okay, is this everything working? So this all, this, this unit will have, uh, goes out in three different ways. It'll go out in a, just a printed circuit board only, in a populated printed circuit board, and then in a complete uh, uh, built unit. Um, so that's four ways because of the, I, then the semi kit, which is um, all the parts to make a complete uh, uh, unit. Okay, so I think I covered all the basic details. Please watch the other video. I was going to integrate it in the middle of this, but I'm not now. I'm just going to run it as a separate video. So please watch the other video to see the power that this unit has in relationship. Um, okay, this is video one. I'll probably be doing several more. Okay, thank you, everybody.